All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my channel, I'm Thomas, and I do educational videos. Today is the 31st video that we're doing on the reciprocal system of theory. Uh, and I believe this is the ninth video on his final book called Beyond Space and Time. Dewey B. Larson was uh, the originator of the reciprocal system of theory, uh, working on it from uh, about 1930 until his death in 1990. He published uh, many, many books and articles on the theory. The basic gist of the theory is that the universe is not made out of matter, it's not made out of energy, but it is made out of motion. And motion is the relationship between space and time. And um, time and space are identical to each other, except that they are reciprocals of each other. Um, and then he, uh, it took him about 20 years to get to that point uh, of for uh, making that, um, that postulate and uh, the other postulate, which is a little bit under dispute and uh, not as important. But um, then... Once he had the postulate, he took a step-by-step -step process, if this, then that, if this and that, and he constructed a, an entire theoretical universe out of um, his theory. And then he kind of compared the theoretical universe to the actual universe that the scientist had discovered. And uh, all of his earlier books are on uh, chemistry and physics and astronomy, Met, uh, but this final book that he does, uh, which was published posthumously, uh, is on metaphysics, uh, especially philosophy, psychology, um, and um, I guess uh, uh, religion. And uh, so he gets into the soft sciences here and uh, we are right now in the middle of chapter five uh if this uh sounds a little daunting you probably do want to go back to the beginning of these videos and uh watch all of them uh it's probably might be too hard to jump in at this point uh but we are in chapter five and we're talking about life uh where does life come from and again, uh, you know, Larson is saying where, you know, Einstein is saying that the speed of light is the maximum speed of the universe. Larson is saying that the speed of light is the midpoint of the universe, the null, uh, the neutral point of the universe. And that half the universe moves faster than the speed of light. Uh, he calls that the cosmic sector. And that is where uh, the metaphysical phenomena originate and that half the universe that is moving slower than the speed of light is the half that we're familiar with he calls the material universe and this is you know the realm of, of chemistry and physics and um but life itself is a combination of the two it is a combination of a material unit along with a cosmic unit. Now, uh, the breakthrough that Larson has here is that he, you know, on both sides of, of the ledger here from that boundary, you know, this is the material sector slower than the speed of light. We know a lot about this sector from study and from measurement and from observation, um, from theorizing, hypothesizing, and what we know uh, about the uh, about the material sector we also know about the cosmic sector just in reverse uh, you switch time and space because these are identical to each other so um, we can we have the potential to understand everything about the material sector uh, and so uh, he's also saying that life itself is a combination of both. So that's where we're going to get started right now with him. Um, and I'm just going to read a, a little bit of his stuff here from chapter five. 
The theoretical conclusion that a living organism is a compound unit in which a material structure is combined with and under the control of a cosmic unit is therefore completely in harmony with the behavior of the DNA molecules. Such a combination structure is the only form in which a cosmic unit could manifest itself other than very fleetingly in the material structure of the universe. Again, he's saying that the cosmic unit, uh, it cannot exist in the material sector only just for an instant. It, it immediately decays because uh, it's out of its element. It's not, in, it's not in the right environment. Each one of these units is, is a kind of motion. And the atomic, uh, the atomic units are kinds of, uh, they're, they're rotations. And um, it, the rotations are basically unwound if you put them in the wrong kind of gravitational field, the wrong sector. And so a cosmic unit cannot exist in the material sector unless it is actually the minor part of a material structure. It has to join with a material structure uh, for it to be able to exist other than fleetingly. A cosmic aggregate is loca localized in time, not in space, and it is therefore impossible for such an aggregate to have an independent existence at a specific spatial location. But it can in exist in space as one component of a compound structure. Stable structures incorporating cosmic components exist in the chemical elements of the electronegative groups. Um, that's the simplest, uh, the simplest kind of form of uh, maybe uh, not quite life uh, are for the electronegatives, um, the elements over there on the... Um, right side of the periodic table. One of the rotational motions of each of these elements is, of course, of the cosmic type, the kind of motion that is normal in the inverse or cosmic sector of the universe. It would not be possible for all or even most of the motion of the material atom to be of this type. But as long as the larger part of the motion is material in character, a cosmic type of motion may exist as a minor component. These elements are therefore, in a sense, combination material and cosmic structures, and thus roughly analogous to the theoretical biological combination. Um, the cosmic sector of the universe is an exact duplicate of the material sector, except that space and time are interchanged. Every element and every combination of elements that enters into the structure of the DNA molecule is paralleled by an analogous cosmic structure, identical in every respect except for the reversal of the roles of space and time. Furthermore, the elements themselves are nothing more than combinations of several different motions, and any one of these motions may take the cosmic orientation as indicated in the previous paragraph. Theoretically, therefore, the cosmic unit which alters the behavior of the DNA molecule may be anything from a complete cosmic molecule to a single feature of the structure of a single cosmic atom. Some further theoretical study uh, will be necessary. It is probable, however, that the cosmic component of the DNA molecule in a very simple organism is a relatively small unit, something which like the cosmic type of rotation of the electronegative elements, can be derived from sources that are readily available in the material sector. A definite identification of this cosmic unit, the life unit, as we will call it, uh, is not necessary. So, 
just how the life unit accomplishes the control over the material aggregate of the biological organism has not yet been determined. Uh, and now he kind of muses on the various possibilities. Um, and um, in a certain sense, we can say that this cosmic component controls the cosmic, the compound formation. The manner in which the life unit exercises control over the biological organism is no doubt of this same general character. The periodic reversal, which alternates the molecule building with a separation into halves, is something that the cosmic unit is capable of causing, as the regularities in the cosmic sector are in time rather than in space. Okay, now, um, okay, now here he's talking, um, inasmuch as the primary combination for combining forces act between like units, material with material and cosmic with cosmic. The growth of the material structure in size and complexity as evolutionary development proceeds is accompanied by a corresponding increase in the complexity of the life unit. The life unit in the most advanced living structures is the product of billions of years of this kind of development, and it is undoubtedly a very complex structure. Some of the implications of this point will be discussed later. Um, now, again, Larson is more or less assuming that the uh, evolutionary theorists got it right and that we're talking about billions of years of development, uh, which just rubs me the wrong way. Um, but that's, you know, that's what I have problem with with Larson's theory is that he, he, comes up with these theoretical conclusions and then he searches for the actual the actual science to back it up and a lot of times the actual science is what's wrong and then he shoehorns or contorts his own theory um, to make it agree with this incorrect theory of the legacy science okay now um now we're now uh, finally I think we're going to get around to uh dealing with this interregional ratio here. In the previous study of the physical universe, his previous study, it was found that material atoms and molecules exert certain sort short range forces only within a limited region of space which has a radius in the neighborhood of three times 10 to the minus eight centimeters. Okay, that is uh, what he's, uh, he's calling this the time region, but this is larger than the time region. Um, well, this is, this is like the th three dimensions of it. When such atoms or molecules gather in a solid or liquid aggregate, they therefore take up positions in which they are separated by approximately this distance. In effect, each atom or molecule exercises a degree of control over its own small region of space, a region approximately coincident with what crystallographers call a unit cell. Since a cosmic molecule has the same kind of properties as a material molecule, differing only in the direction of those forces, the life unit too ex exercises control over a small region of space and only over that small region. This region, together with its contents, is a biological cell. The basic situation is the same in both cases. Uh, a material aggregate is a composite of cells, and a complex biological organism is a composite of cells. There is no definite boundary between the cells of a material aggregate, similar to that between the cells of a biological structure. 
but this is merely the result of the fact that all of the units that are involved in the material aggregate are units of the same kind. Uh, that is, they are all material. Um, in the biological aggregate, cosmic unit X exerts a force on material unit Y, but unit Y cannot exert a force of this type, a cosmic force at all. And the cosmic type of action therefore terminates at the distance limit within which the force exerted by X is effective. This limit is the cell boundary. The biological cell is considerably larger than the unit cell of the material aggregate because of the cosmic nature of the life unit forces. The effective reach of which determines the cell size. The diameter of the cell in both cases is basically related to the natural unit of distance. Now again, by the discrete unit postulate of the uh, of this um, first postulate, Larson says that um, the universe is made out of motion. Motion is the relationship between space and time. Space and time have three dimensions and they are in three dimensions and in discrete units. Okay, so there is no fraction of, or, or decimal of a unit. You either have one unit or you, have, you don't have any. You know, or you can, have, you can have, you know, integers. You can have two units or three units or four units or whatever. But it's, they're in discrete units. And so he's saying that there is a... Uh, uh, one unit of time and there is one unit of space. Uh, there's nothing inside of that one unit. Uh, inside of that one unit of space is only time uh, by the reciprocal postulate. And inside that one unit of time, there's only space. There's no, there's no time because you have to have at least one unit for you to have any time or space. So, um, so built into his system, there is the idea of the time region and the space region. And those are the regions where you are within one unit of time and you are within one, or one unit of space and you're within one unit of time. Um, now, here he's saying that something is different with the biological case, with the life case. The diameter of the cell in both cases is basically related to the natural unit of distance, which has been evaluated from fundamental relationships as approximately 5 times 10 to the minus 6 centimeters. But the nature of the interatomic forces has an effect, explained in detail in previous publications which reduces the radius of the unit cell of solid matter to roughly 1 one fiftieth of this natural unit distance or about 3 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. Uh, the number is actually 156.44, um, and that's what he calls the interregional ratio. Um, that number uh, is, can, can change. Uh, it can be 128 uh, or 128 times 10 over 9 or 128 times 11 over 9. Uh, so the 128 times 11 over 9 is the 156.44. Uh, it depends on um, the dimensionality and um, the nature of the atoms that are involved. Um, but so what he's saying is that this factor, though, it reverses in the case of a life unit. So instead of dividing by 150, you actually have to multiply by 150. Here's what he says. Um, because of the reversal of directions in the cosmic sector, the range of effectiveness of the cosmic forces is approximately 150 times the natural unit of distance or about 8 times 10 to the minus 4 centimeters. That is, the maximum diameter of a biological cell is about a 15 thousandths of a meter, of, of a millimeter.
Although this biological cell is an extremely small object, when judged by our everyday standards, it is immense compared to the size of an atom. Since its diameter is about 25,000 times the average interatomic distance of a solid or liquid, the volume of a cell is roughly um, 1.5 times 10 to the 13 times the volume, that's 15 trillion, times the volume occupied by an atom. Thus, uh, from the atomic standpoint, there is plenty of room inside a cell even for DNA molecules of 10 billion atoms each. The cell is actually a large and highly organized system containing billions of molecules from which are con constituted a great variety of cell components, each with its own specific function. The operation of controlling and coordinating these various functions is handled by the nucleus of the cell a relatively small but readily identifiable body existing in the interior of most cells. And this nucleus in turn is a complex structure in and of itself. Now what's interesting here is Larson's first book is actually called The Case Against the Nuclear Atom. So Larson does not believe that atoms have nucleuses, nuclei, but he does build in nucleus, the nucleus for a cell. So cells have nuclei, but atoms do not. Okay, uh, we will resume there somewhere in the middle of this chapter five, which is going on forever, but uh, we're just trying to figure out the life unit and uh, we will figure out some more stuff tomorrow. So thanks for tuning in and we will see you next time.